The couple who built this house have strong roots in Pretoria. Both studied accountancy at Tux, and after a stint in Joburg, they wanted to get back to their roots. Choosing an ideally situated but compact plot, they asked architect Andre Eckstein to make their vision a reality. Andre, this really is stunning. Now, this isn't the biggest piece of land, so how did you manage to build this home with the space restrictions? Now, Jade, I must say it was quite a challenge um, because we had to fit a fairly big program onto a very small site. And a very important uh, aspect of, of the brief was that there must be garden for their two busy boys to uh, actually to play in. So what we actually decided to do is that uh, actually some of the areas are subterranean, so, you know, are actually below the ground. The basement houses a TV room and play area for the boys, as well as the guest bedroom with its own path back up to the garden above. Smart use of space, which lent breathing room to the design. What is the process that led to this concrete exterior? You know, it's become more and more important to really, really get the most out of a site. So what we try to do is build a structure that floats over the landscape and that, that actually then activates the landscape as the, as the house. And that's why you will also notice that the building is both on the western and the eastern side. It's, it's completely glass with a very lightweight sort of steel support structure to articulate the floating shell that we've used as shelter. The family's really blessed with beautiful surroundings. How did you manage to fit in a garden as well? Yeah, it was tricky. On the western side of the stand, there's a, a nature reserve, and it was very important to really try and engage with uh, such a, a wonderful natural resource. So uh, the view had to be to the west, and west always has, has a problem in terms of uh, your solar gain on the western side. So we had to do careful modeling to achieve a good shading, even late in the afternoon, so people can actually utilize this western view. The setting proved a major inspiration to Kristen Page's interiors, as it did for her career. It was her move to Pretoria which saw her shift from studying biology to design, and she clearly made the right choice. This really isn't your traditional home. What was the brief that you were given? Our client spoke to us and said that she wants a very modern industrial, but keeping the house contemporary as well at the same time. So as you can see, it's very minimalistic, sleek lines, very neat and tidy. And what were the elements that you incorporated into the kitchen to give it this modern feel? What we decided to do was have custom-made pendants above the kitchen island here, made out of steel. And then to replicate that, we had the whole kitchen front here wrapped in steel, as you can see. The kitchen island also has been done with a very thin Neulith top to give that very sleek feel again, but then bringing in a bit of warmth by using a natural granite stone. And we've honed it down so it gives a very nice warmth feel when you put your hand on it. Yeah, and, um, Albert and Adele are very, very keen wine drinkers, you know, and one would expect a nice collection of wine here in the kitchen, but fortunately, we had the uh, possibility of introducing a wine cellar in the, uh, in the basement, where, of course, it's much cooler and it's easier to do climate control. The open plan is, of course, very inclusive. Yes, it really is, Jade. As you can see, the whole space here is very open plan, but it's been divided by the big Perspex pendants over here that see through creating no divide throughout the spaces, but still creating their spaces within the area. Mm. Yeah. And you've also walked through the floating uh, staircases. The office often jokes with me and tells me, you know, in case of doubt, make it float. Because the wonderful thing about using uh, these elements, using actually um, lightness and uh, height differentiation is actually you get really nice spatial quality and spatial definition. And what we also did here is we, uh, we introduced steel to carry the concrete rather than using weighty concrete beams because I think the, the steel just makes the concrete appear a bit lighter. So it reduces the weighty aesthetic that concrete could often have. There's a lot of concrete and steel used in the interior. So what we did here with the floating element that's being created, we used a softer, warmer timber finish so that it can bring a bit more warmth throughout the house for the family. The staircase is really beautiful in this space. It's certainly a statement piece. It's absolutely stunning. It's a nice feature as you walk into the house. And because you have the cables that don't create a divide, it again brings that whole open feeling through the upstairs area and the downstairs area. Well, Kristen, why don't you take Jade up to the uh, bedroom 
and I'm going to go down to the cellar and see if there's some refreshment available. With very few walls to hang paintings on, real sunsets, thunderstorms and wildlife provide the artwork. As you can see, there's a fireplace here as well that is a palette burner, so it burns for longer and it gets really warm. And in winter time, it warms up the place really nicely. And the best part is that it's a nice, stunning modern design. It really is. For the lady of the house, this is also how a corporate environment should feel. I think this is the neatest office I've ever seen. Does the client work from home ever? She does work from home. And the one thing that she wanted was to be able to still feel open and welcome throughout the whole house and not have the study in a small corner that's closed off in the house. So she sits here behind her, she has a nice garden, she has a view onto the pool and onto the living space where she can see her kids running around and playing still and be able to get her work done. A working mum. Yes. <laughs> Within a mostly neutral colour scheme, a change of texture or materials can have a dramatic effect. You would never expect this to be the, the main bedroom. How did you break the design boundaries here? Yeah, you really wouldn't. So what you can see that we've done is we created a small little TV room in this area by the use of the cabinetry and a small wall that's brought down so it's not all the way to ceiling height, creating the illusion again of an open space plan. And as we go around the corner, you'll see where the bedroom actually is. The same unit anchors a master suite surrounded by glass. What would you say are some of the design elements that make this bedroom beautiful? So what we've done here is we've used a wall to create the divide between the different areas. We use a textured paint to give more of a warmth feeling throughout the bedroom. Again, bringing in the timber with the bed and then pushing boundaries a bit more by having the bath almost parallel to the bed. Planning the house took a year and the use of space is so smart that it seems not a day was wasted. When you go into the bathroom you'll see that there's two beautiful glass boxes and then you have in the middle this floating element that creates a bathroom vanity and again we've used a nice granite there that is a flamed or honed kind of granite to bring in that warmth and we have a his and her basin with hanging suspended mirrors. The central multi-purpose unit integrates all storage. Minimalism is definitely the theme of this house. What are some of the key features in the master bedroom? As you can see, what we've done is we've kept the height of the windows over there with the cabinetry and the wall over here to still create that illusion of being able to see outside and have the light come in. Again, also we have the absolutely stunning view out of Pretoria over here, which is just a, an upside to the whole bedroom. The nice thing about where this bedroom is situated is that it's very far from the kids' bedroom. So even though everything's so open, they are still very far from each other, creating their own little areas, which is amazing. The interior within the kids' bedroom also has the same sort of finishes, the same timber brought in, and the boys' bedrooms are mirrored, so they have the exact same thing, and no one can be fussed about something being different. You've really done a spectacular job up here. How about we go and utilize that deck and go meet up with Andre for that drink? The bry area, pool deck and lawn feel expansive, even within such narrow confines. Another feature included but out of sight is a 10,000 litre storage tank to make the most of rainwater. What have you enjoyed most about this project? Jane, it's difficult to say, you know, I enjoy all my projects. But what I did enjoy a lot here is to actually to work in a very constricted site. It was quite challenging in terms of program and to even do that uh, off grid. You know, we actually off grid this house. So I think, you know, to put all of those sort of tick boxes together and achieve something that's, that the client is very happy with, you know, I enjoy. The most rewarding thing of this whole project was learning everything throughout the whole experience, but then also being able to hand it over to the clients and see their joy on their faces. So it was a long process, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that went into it, but it is really, really amazing to see how happy they are. And also to say that we now have designed an award-winning house. Well, congratulations to the both of you. You really have done a phenomenal job. Cheers. 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 Andre sees the role of architect as a mediator between the landscape and people. In this case, the result is pure harmony.